Hello, everyone. My name is Ray. I'm on the KUnit team with Google. And um, I didn't expect to be the first speaker, but uh, this is my presentation on storing and outputting test information, in particular, my project on KUnit attributes, as well as KTAP v2. Let's see here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is an outline for my presentation. I'm first going to go over on a little bit of background on KUnit. And then in general, what do I mean when I say test information? That's a very broad concept. Then I'm going to go further into KUnit test attributes. And then how should we actually output that test information? Finally, I'm going to touch a little bit on KTAP v2. And then, of course, I'm going to have some time for questions. I also have a couple of questions I want some feedback on. So let's get started. So what is KUnit? So for those that don't know, KUnit is a unit testing framework for the Linux kernel. It's been upstream since 5.5, and the tests are written in C and run in kernel mode. Um, the, we have Python tooling to run these tests and also parse the results. We have a really nice simple command here, just knit.py and then run. Um, it uses UML or user mode Linux by default or QMU for any other architectures. And I've included a example here for x86-64. Um, we also have the KUnit maintainer here, so <laughs> he'll be giving a talk right after mine. Um, okay, so more on test information. So what do I mean when I say test information? First of all, I'm not talking about specifics during test execution, like what the variable x, what the value, it is, the value of that is at the beginning of a test. The definition I'm kind of going for is information primarily for the purpose of user interaction, either before or after the test execution. So an example would be like a test result or the speed of a test. Is this test slow or fast? Um, the current norm for this test information is that we have the basics. So like the test result, the test name, and those are very well categorized, both in how they're stored and also how they're outputted. They're very clearly organized. And then everything else is, in my opinion, pretty unorganized. Everything else kind of falls into diagnostic data, or we may even have information like we know this one test is flaky or slow, but that information doesn't get marked anywhere and it just kind of goes missing. So my question is, is this a good system? Could we instead take that more interesting test information and make it more useful? Um, so that sounds great, right? But um, the problem is there's still a wide variety of test information. I'm gonna go through a couple examples to show what this test information is that I'm talking about, why it's useful, and what we would need to do in order to make it useful. So the first example I'm gonna go over is speed, so the relative speed of a test. Um, this is actually the inspiration for this whole project. There was a config for memcopy slow tests, and uh, we thought this was really clever, um, a way to filter out slow tests, but is there a way to do that across the kernel, across KUnit tests? Um, so clearly it would be useful because you'd be able to filter out these tests based off of how fast or slow the test is. But what are the needs in order to make it useful? We need a way to manually store that information, a way to filter based off of that information, and a way to output that into KTAP. And for those that don't know, KTAP is the kernel test output format. Um, so it's the specification for kernel test results. The second example here is isn't it? So whether the tests use init data or functions. Why is this useful? Because we could filter based off tests if it happens to be the case where the init section could be discarded, like in the case where, we, where we're rerunning tests. Um, the needs for this, for us to make it useful, is a way to easily access that information and also a way to filter based off of it. Then I'm just gonna go over one more example here. Um, output files is another example. So like, this would be a list of file paths of auxiliary files that are generated during test execution that could hold more context for the test results. Um, obviously, that would be incredibly use useful for the test, whoever's running the test. And the needs for that is a way to store that information during test execution and also a way to output that. Okay, so hopefully these three examples um, really demonstrate why this test information could be useful, but also it really begs the question of what can we do to make this test information useful? We need a way to store the information, both manually and a way where it's auto-generated, um, filter based off of the test results or test information, and then output in a readable and parsable way. Okay. So now I'm gonna move on to KUnit Attributes, which is a project I worked on and is now upstream. 
So the objective for Kana attributes is basically to solve the problem I just mentioned. So a way to save and access that supplemental test information. We currently have two attributes. So we have the speed of the test and we have the module name. Um, so the, whatever module is associated with the test suite. Okay, what can you do? Um, you can create an attribute with pretty much any data type. So we use void pointer, so it's super flexible. Um, and you can mark tests either manually, like with speed or auto-generated, like with the module name. Um, you can filter tests based off these results, and you can also output that into KTAP. But since KTAP is shared across the kernel, I'm going to go more into that later because that needs to be something that we agree and specify on. Um, and then I've just included a small how to use this. Um, you use these this struct knit attributes, and um, there's also a knit case slow, which would be specifically if you just want to quickly mark a test as slow. And then obviously you can filter based off of this using this module param um, knit.filter. And then we also have Python tooling flags that are the same, like according to filter or filter skip. Filter skip is just in the case where you'd want to skip the test rather than um, just completely not included in the output. Yeah, okay, and then just to demonstrate why this could be useful, um, it's very useful even in my day-to-day. -day. So here you just have KUnit run completely normal with the default settings, and it's 312 tests, and it takes about 10 seconds on my machine. But then if you filter out just six slow tests, it goes all the way down to four seconds. So that's 63% faster. And um, as you can see, it's really that running time, which makes sense, that makes it so much faster. It's actually 89% faster. So seven seconds to about one second. So this makes a huge difference in just the speed of how fast I can test a large amount of K-unit tests. And then I wanted to include a list of potential K-unit attributes that I've been thinking about. First is is init, which I mentioned earlier. Um, we're interested in rerunning tests after boot. And in that instance, we want to be able to filter out all of the init tests. Um, the second one is just the file path of the suite. That could be really useful for someone just during debugging pur purposes. The third one's kind of interesting, custom tags. So this is kind of more similar to how like JUnit would do their attributes. They have these tags. Um, it's a list of strings and then you can mark the test. And the good thing about it is that it could be very personalized. So I actually have a rough draft of this on my local computer setup. And then I can mark a test as flaky and then just run that one test case. Um, and it's a lot faster. Um, and then a final uh, option is actually parameterized test attributes. So I'm looking to put an RFC out onto the list for this, but a way to implement a generate attributes function to assign attributes given a parameter. So I did include like a little example here if your eyesight's really good, <laughs> um, you can see it. But it basically says if like the value of the parameter is two, then mark this as slow. So it's an interesting extension for this project. Okay, but um, I told you I was gonna go more into KTAP here. Um, so all of these attributes are outputted into KTAP, but um, since it's shared across the kernel, we if we wanna change the KTAP specification at all, this needs to become a larger conversation. So what are the needs um, for the KNA attributes and test information as a whole? We wanna wait for it to be identifiable, wait for it to be parsable. And um, because I think the most use useful way to use this would be to have an actual specification in the KTAP spec. Um, I've actually submitted this proposal to the KTAP v2, which is called KTAP metadata. It's a working title. <laughs> um, but the KTAP line format would be this like hashtag type value. Um, it's very similar to a diagnostic line for those who are familiar with KTAP. And that's on purpose because then it would aid any existing parsers who don't really want to pay attention to the KTAP metadata. They can just parse it out as a diagnostic line. Um, you notice I've included this example here for suites. The KTAP metadata is in between the version line and the test plan. And then for normal test cases, it's just above the test case. These locations are you know, important because they help the parser to identify what the KTAP metadata is. Um, and also note that all the KTAP metadata blocks start with a header that includes the test name. And this actually solves a, another problem that we had as KUnit where we wanted to include the test suite name before you do the results. So if it crashes halfway through, you can easily identify the test name. Um, you don't need to get to the result line. So 
but really um, what metadata types should we have specified? And that's something I would love to get some feedback on. Things that are currently discussed on the list is of course the test name, the file path module name, um, speed, as mentioned before, config info is an interesting one that we could consider, supplemental file paths, but yeah, what, what should we consider? And then I just wanna know, it doesn't need to be a Canaan attribute. I think it's a bit confusing of a concept, so I included a Venn diagram here, basically showing that Canaan attributes and KTAP metadata can over, overlap, but don't necessarily need to be the same concept. Um, and I've included a couple examples, like the test name would be maybe a KTAP metadata, but then not necessarily a Canaan attribute. And then a really interesting concept is that we could also have custom metadata types. Because KTAP specification is a little bit slower, um, it would be really annoying if every time you need a new metadata type, you'd need to specify it. So we could use like prefixes to um, say that something is a custom metadata type versus you could even use KTAP underscore for the specified metadata types. And that would even improve the parsability of this concept too. Um, and then I just wanted to touch on KTAP v2 really quickly. Um, so I've submitted this proposal, KTAP metadata, but I've also submitted a proposal for the skip test result. Um, that's potentially a bit controversial and we could talk about that more later. I don't know if it's necessarily um, pertinent for this presentation, but I also just wanna mention that uh, Frank Rowan has done a really great job with documenting all of the um, KTAP v2 information here at this website and all the changes are going on in a separate branch within his tree. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to open the floor to questions such as how should we continue to develop KTAP v2? Um, what should the timeline be for all the future versions of KTAP? And yeah, so I wanted to open it up to questions. I have some leading um, questions here that I'd really like to get feedback on. I'll just read them through and then open the floor, but um, what KNIT attributes should we be saving? What is useful for people? Um, would generating KNIT attributes be helpful for parameterized tests? Is that something people are interested in? Are there specific attributes that if we do that, then would be very useful to include for parameterized tests? What are people's thoughts on this proposed KTAP metadata? what test information should be specified type of KTAP metadata versus a custom type, um, and then how in general can we support the development of KTAP v2. Yeah, that's my presentation. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, okay, toxic. Sorry. <laughs> hey, um, it, it sounds weird to me that, that this is K unit attributes because I would think that the kernel's other testing infrastructure has similar needs. So like how does self-test handle that? We also have slow self-test, we have flaky self-tests. Why is it um, K-unit specific? Why is it not just, not just like test attributes? Um, so the reason it's K-unit attributes is partly because of me. That's my background. I work on the K-unit team. And I would love to hear more about K-self-test. Um, the idea with sort of KTAP metadata is a way to specify it across those kernel frameworks. So if we had this like basis of the KTAP metadata specified, then it'd be easy to like um, match it with other fr frameworks, testing frameworks. So that was the idea. But if if we want to make a test attributes um, concept, that would be great as well. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I think it's an easier path to upstream, right? If you're... Um solving just one problem and ignoring the rest, it, it it kind of forces the solution to remain unique to KTAB. But if you expand the scope to try and, and annotate tests in general in the kernel, because um, we have a bunch, like, like like if you think even stuff like RCU torture, right? Yeah. You could annotate that as a as, um, very long test. Um, maybe it's worth considering stepping away from making it K-unit specific. Yeah, that's true. David, did you wanna? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, it's it's difficult to say, you know, we want a attribute system for all different tests in the kernel when we don't already have a way of describing all tests in the kernel overall. Um, the KUnit attributes stuff works i think pretty well as this is the k unit implementation of whatever attribute system we're going to 
to end up using. The KTAP stuff uh, mentioned, KTAP metadata is generic across all all different um, uh, kernel tests. You know that can easily be used. Just add the appropriate print statement to your test to output an an attribute. Um, well, out, output some metadata. The way of specifying attributes, just because tests are specified in different ways in different frameworks, is by necessity going to have to have some sort of, you know, going to be specific to a particular framework in some way. Um, uh, I think the only way to make that identical across all frameworks would be to remove all distinctions between between frameworks. So yeah, um, the case of test, the the um, goals of these tests are different. So that is um, one thing that uh, makes makes it harder. Probably, I would love to see a common um, infrastructure, but um, um, we have to also see how it will integrate with that particular framework. So that's probably where we will run into issues with um, how do we integrate that into diff the same into different frameworks. KDAP is common. k self test uses that um, as well. Um, KUnit is a unit test framework primarily for us. So um, I would love to see it, but I do also see the complexity of having one single framework for all of those. Um, parameter tests, we do have some of those in k self test KUnit, it looks like you're able to uh, able to use that and specify that to all the tests. And the nature of K-self tests happens to be that we do not have a consistent uh, way of specifying parameterized tests. Okay. So. Yeah, I'm really looking for that. Um, any feedback on K-self tests because I come from the KTAP background and KUnit background, but then it's it's difficult to identify. Like I think just the practicality of how to also output the KTAP metadata will probably come into a big play of how that is formatted um, and outputted. So if we could just get more engagement on the um, proposal for the KTAP metadata, I think we could come to some sort of agreement for at least KTAP. And then since some KSELF tests use that, um, hopefully we'd get engagement from both frameworks. Yeah. Okay, so um, <clears throat> your custom tag idea is very interesting. We've been, <clears throat> when we first introduced KTAP, you know, we knew we were leaving diagnostic lines as just freeform, which is just creates anarchy, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but so if you could, if you could crack that nut, that would be great. Um, but the problem, right, is we have this big distributed team and people just choose whatever they feel like applies to their uh, so you kind of need the equivalent of an internet naming authority, right? You need someone who can collect the tags and start to enforce yeah. them. So one of the one of the things you need, I believe, is you're going to need a test uh, that tests to make sure the the metadata on the test is not out of sync with like, the spec or whatever. So you need idea. you need the you need to maybe be able to collect the attributes from a test even though you're not running the test. Uh, so that's one of one idea. So, with the Kena attributes, we do have that functionality. You can collect the attributes before running the test and outputs them into just like a KTAP output almost. Um, but yeah, that's an interesting idea. That part of the reason I didn't introduce custom tags because I do have a rough draft of it is because I didn't want it to just to fall into anarchy immediately. <laughs> so I wanted to do like the speed and module name, which are very regulated and also potentially like very understandable across the kernel. So. Um, yeah, but I like the custom tags as well. That would be great. <laughs> so I think this is really, really exciting. One of the reasons why I've never used KTAP is I found it too limiting. Um, and because XFS tests use JUnit and mm -hmm. it being XML, it's a lot more extensible. But more critically, uh, it allowed me to annotate test ROMs. Um, so not only do I have attributes on individual tests, um, I am attached to a test output. This is the kernel version. This is the version of the test that was being used. This is the kernel config that I'm mm -hmm. using in some sort of high level abstract way. This is the file system that I'm testing. Um, and then one of the nice things about you know, JUnit XML 
is I can actually combine multiple test runs into a single output file that you know will have this is ext4 with the 4k block size this is ext4 with the 1k block size and i have like 12 different configs with several hundred tests in each config and all in one single file so this is clearly not going to meet that but um, it, have you thought about adding um, attributes about a test run, right? What kernel version is it? You know, what version of tests are being used? What config is being used? Um, and because I think that would be really, really helpful. Uh, and then the other thing is if there are tools to convert between um, KTAP and JUnit, JUnit and KTAP, um, one of the other reasons why I really like XML is I can import that into various dashboards um, mm -hmm. that use the XML framework. Um, and so the more we can actually have interchange and maybe have a bit more, um, you know, functionality equivalents, uh, then you maybe we can, you know, sort of standardize by, you know, transformations and not have people choosing one format over another just simply because they need certain features that only one particular format can provide them at the moment. So, yeah, that's a really interesting idea. The Both the test run attributes, I hadn't really considered that much. I was thinking that'd be more like the case of metadata, but I would be interested in thinking about that more because I know people do have interest in like config info being outputted into KTAP. Um, yeah, and then and then standardiz standardization by transformation is also a really interesting concept. Um, yeah, that if we had this standardized enough, we could start using these transformations more, and then that would even um, that would even like back those the, that specification even further. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. I'll think and about I think it. That starts to solve like the the problem that we see in CI that uh, we are generating different types of data and outputs in different CIs, but we have some things that specified at the kernel level the test run level that will make life easier for a lot of people. I think. OK, yeah. Uh, yeah, um, about uh, attributes that could be useful for tests. I'm thinking about, I don't know if this makes sense, but uh, for me, looking uh, how test results and regressions are being reported, and, and we'll talk about that later in the last uh, talk, I wonder if it would be useful to uh, specify the, the area uh, where the test is, well, the test is testing. Like, for example, test could be a part of the testing part of the core features of the kernel, or it could be a driver test, or it could be file system, system tests. Because right now, uh, I can see the results either by test suite, or by test name, or by mm. whatever. But if I'm a developer, I might be interested in uh, watching, oh. and keeping an eye on the results that might affect the work that I'm doing. And that could be uh, a way of classifying the tests all across the, the board. Like a uh, test area attribute right. that you can like specify yeah. based off of. Interesting. Like Interesting. Uh, okay, in, yeah. In either subsystem or something that identifies a test area. And if you could filter on that, say, I want to test the file system, I want to test networking, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. It's like a tag system. system. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try a little bit of that kind of Why? 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 Oh, yes. oh yes. so we're, uh, we're gonna we we can continue this discussion in the hallways. Yeah. Thank you. This is great. Thank and you. Then, uh, next. Yeah. Next up is David.